Hello again, I am Blunty. We're talking about VR today again. There's all kinds of really fun and interesting things we do in VR. Gaming is the first thing that comes to most people's minds because that's a very sort of intuitive thing to think about you know, using in VR, that extra immersion you get in gaming, being soaked into that world good and proper. It's fantastic. Um, and, and the profile of VR and AR stuff is becoming a little more mainstream these days, what with the Quest 3 being such a big hit and, of course, Apple's uh, headset as well. Um, and you probably, if you've ever looked into VR, you've probably seen, you know, the standard VR controllers. And there's all kinds of stuff you can snap onto these to enhance your sense of immersion, like tennis rackets or golf clubs or, uh, uh, you know, pistols and, and rifle stocks and things like that if you're into shooting games. Uh, and they're fine. But when it comes to creative tasks in VR, it's a bit of an issue because there's only so much precision you can get from using your hands. Our hands are spectacular tools. Or, you know, using one of these to emulate a hand or use a laser pointer coming out at the end of it and things like that. There is a limitation. But of course, we have a tool that's fantastic for enhancing our natural precision in an extremely intuitive way. And it's probably one of the oldest creative tools we've ever got, you know. I don't know what comes first, the, the stone hammer or the pointing stick. But either way. Um, but yeah, an accessible version of a stylus that we can use in VR is bizarrely something that hasn't happened until now because Logitech have just announced their uh, own uh, VR stylus thingy they're calling the Logitech MX Inc which is interesting because it is the first third-party accessory that Meta have ever put their official stamp on like unlike you know the, the gaming consoles and stuff you can't get third-party controllers to replace your MetaQuest controllers if, if these break or, or you lose them or whatever. So Logitech's stylus is, is really sort of groundbreaking in its own way in two ways. The first accessible, practical VR stylus we might have, because it's, you know, they've been around before, but practical, accessible, affordable, useful, um, not things that apply to what we've seen so far. Logitech are changing that. Um, it's about 130 US American, which is remarkably cheap for a Logitech accessory, I suppose. Some of this stuff is a little bit overpriced, quite frankly. I like Logitech just fine. Um, their stuff is fine. But that's, you know, it's, it's not great. It's not amazing. It's not earth shattering. It's fine. Uh, and they've got a good name to go along with it. So it's usually a fairly safe purchase. But it is a little bit overpriced what you can get elsewhere. But $130 for a VR stylus with pressure test sensitivity and all that sort of stuff. I feel like it's a fairly accessible price uh, for creative tools. Um, so when you're doing sort of creative stuff in VR regularly, you know, you've got your controllers, you've got your hands, but nothing really compares to the accuracy uh, or precision or intuitiveness of a stylus. So it's, re it's really kind of very inviting and interesting uh, to, to think about what kind of possibilities that would open up. Um, they're also seeing a little inkwell dock, but that will charge a thing as well. Interesting, the, the one I'm using right here on, on my little tablet here, I'll show you what I'm drawing later. Um, this doesn't need batteries. This is completely a wireless thing. It uses some Wacom technology, but you have to have the compatibility built into the tablet that you're using for this to actually function. And this, of course, won't work in VR. The, the Logic one presumably has little IR lights all over it, so the headset can track it, because that's how it tracks these controllers. There's got a little ring of IR lights uh, around the top surface there, and sort of one down here as well. Um, but yeah, according to people who've had hands-on, it is remarkably uh, accurate. It's got the same tracking accuracy as the Quest controllers do because, well, again, it's tracking in the same way. But because of the way you hold it, the way you use it, it does apparently feel a lot more precise. I've had no worries with the precision of these. They track really, really nicely, but, you know, bigger, broader gestures. But when you're trying to use them to, to, to find stuff, to point it, like if you're, if you're streaming your desktop, for example, you're trying to use it like a mouse and point very, very specifically, you, you suddenly feel... You know, your hand naturally sort of has a tremble when you're trying to hold it really, really still for most people. And it's it's kind of awkward to use like that. But somehow, when you're holding a stylus and you're touching things more directly, that's kind of a different story altogether. Um, so yeah, along, alongside the little inkwell dock thingy they've got for it, they're also selling a mat, which promises to recreate the feeling of drawing on paper. So you can use this on a real surface, of course, when you're in VR, but of course the VR, you know, you, you are recording what you're doing digitally in VR, drawing that, or you're tracing a thing on a desktop or things like that. Uh, you can use mixed mode kind of uh, the AR, you know, pass through stuff. Lots and lots of interesting opportunities. But yeah, they're selling a mat that promises the, the feel of paper. Why you wouldn't just get a piece of paper and put it on your desktop to get the feeling of paper, I don't know. 
I wonder how much they're charging for that paper-like feel, Matt. But the interesting thing is, not only is it the first third-party accessory that Quest have ever authorized, uh, but it's coming along with its own built-in support for the Quest headset as well, uh, which means it's not going to work on other headsets unless they also update their software to work with it. I struggle to think that will be a thing because this is an officially meta-licensed product, I suppose. They're going to want it as an exclusive feature, I imagine. Um, but coming with that, coming with the built-in support for that in the headset means app developers can also build towards that because it'll have you know, built-in functionality. And there is a suite of software coming along with it already uh, in uh, Adobe Substance Modeler, which is a 3D modeling thing. I don't touch Adobe products because Adobe are sociopathic as far as companies go. Uh, heavy pass on that. Um, things like Gravity Sketch. Um, there's a painting app as well. I'll put, I'll put a list on the side of the screen here for you. You can look them up yourself. But the point is, a lot of uh, varying different kinds of creativity apps to help people out with this. But yeah, the tracking is apparently done via uh, IR LEDs built inside the stylus. And you can, like they've done with the controllers, you're not going to see the IR LEDs on the stylus. The controller, like I said, it has lights all around the surface, so you can't see them. That's because they use a plastic that is opaque to visible light, but uh, transparent to infrared light. There are lots of different materials you can use for that. So they're building the stylus out of the same kind of plastic so they can bury the LED lights inside, but still have a smooth looking stylus uh, on the outside, which, you know, if, if you're a creative type, aesthetics matter. Yeah, according to, again, reports of people have used this thing um, uh, hands-on, they maintain that no matter how you held it, how, how, how you tilted it, it always maintained its tracking accuracy at all times, which is very, very promising. And the pressure sensitivity allowed them to vary their line width uh, in, a, in a natural feeling way as well. And if you've ever you know, done more than sketching with a, with a pen on a piece of paper, you know that varying your line width for certain styles at least uh, is extremely important to get that feeling really, really natural and being able to tilt and, and pressure and, you know, emulate the, the 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 way a brush moves i've always been kind of shoot at that if i'm honest with you i've always sketched with uh mechanical pencils and 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 uh, uh sharpies and things like that and um uh, you know fine tip felt pens and things it's just the way i tend to work when i say work once upon a time i used to uh work with a mate of mine and we did a self-published little comic and i used to sketch quite a lot I haven't done it for many many years so when i show you what i'm drawing here it's gonna look rough um not to mention the fact that i'm Actually sketching it out on an e-ink tablet, which has a little, <laughs> it's its a couple of generations old. It's got a fair amount of delay. I'm getting another uh, color e-ink tablet in soon for review. So make sure you subbed and whatnot to check that out because it's going to be very interesting. I'll be waiting and waiting and waiting for those to couple, come a couple of generations along so I can get an idea of if the color e-ink is actually worth using or not. And one of the more interesting and quite frankly thoughtful features um, that are included on the Logitech stylus uh, for VR is it's not just sen uh, pressure sensitive as you press in the tip, as you might find on quite a lot of styluses for you know, drawing tablets and things like that, um, but it's got a button on the surface as well that is also pressure sensitive. Um, so that opens up a lot of interesting and intriguing possibilities as well for the way you want to do your you know, creative line work or whatever you're using, whether you're applying material, or taking material away, if you're doing 3D modeling, you can you know, using that airbrush style thing. And yeah, it seems like a really good device. I'm uh, eager to get a look at it. Unfortunately, it's not actually launching until September. I don't know why they even bothered to announce it this soon. Maybe they're trying to get ahead of Apple or something. Is Apple getting close to announcing it? Because apparently Apple's working on their own sort of stylus thing for their headset as well. Maybe they're just in a rush out ahead with that. But well, then again, they're probably announcing it early. So more and more developers can go, oh, there's a thing. I need to start thinking about if I can make my app work with that or make a new app to work with that. That's probably what it is. Um, either way, I'd be very interested to uh, to get my hands on. Like I said, it's been it's been a very long time since I've done much sketching and drawing, and every time I pick up, uh, uh, I used to have a drawing tablet. That thing broke many years ago. Uh, did a few streams with it actually, uh, but yeah, every time I pick up and, and, and my, my my sketchbooks and, and pencils or whatever I've got left lying around and try and draw something, it just I feel so rusty and clumsy, and it looks like shit. And you know, I never stick with it long enough. But you know. Maybe if I get a fancy new VR tool, um, the novelty of it will help me stick with it a little bit longer. Or maybe just having a chat about this and, and drawing a little thing here um, will will sort of get the, the juices flowing. Because quite frankly, I'm not hating uh, how this is coming out right here. But yeah, that's, that's just all I wanted to talk about today. I'm trying a different presentation style today too, trying to concentrate on what I'm saying as I'm 
<laughs> finish off my little drawing here. Um, you know what? It's not too bad. I might save this out and upload it to the Patreon page or something. I've got to be frank with you. I don't actually do a lot of bonus content on the Patreon. It's just there for people who want to support Dexter support. But I always feel guilty about not putting up stuff there to, you know, as little bonuses for the people who are kind enough to uh, join the Patreon for me. So maybe this will go up there. Maybe we'll do a weekly sketch. Maybe I'll take suggestions from the patrons on the weekly sketch. That'll get me. That'll get the juice. That'll get me back in a drawing. That's what I should do. But in any case, uh, I'd be interested to hear what, what kind of creative things you would want to be doing in VR with something as precise as a stylus. Modeling, painting, sketching. Uh, 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 what kind of games would be enhanced with the precision of this if you could sort of directly tap on things? I'm thinking... You know, tabletop games might be a little bit better instead of the reaching out with your whole hand kind of clumsiness and you just go poink, poink, poink. These things go here, stuff like that. Anyway, there's my Raphael in his, in his trench coat. What do you reckon? It's not so bad. I mean, I did copy it from a reference, to be honest with you. This, this is an off, straight off the top of my head. Like I said, I'm very rusty with this thing, so I needed a reference. Uh, the reference is a, a photograph of uh, a McFarlane's model of Raphael from the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie in his trench coat, which is one of my favorite parts of that movie. Uh, when he meets Casey Jones and, and all that sort of stuff and start talking about crumpets and cricket and whatnot. Um, always loved Raphael in the, in the trench coat. Wish I could justify owning that toy. <laughs> Sorry, action figure. Display figure! Uh, either way, I'll, I'll attach that reference image to this when I post it on the Patreon, I think. Anyway, thanks for watching. I am Blunty. I will catch you next time. And um, yeah, interesting things happening in VR. should probably sign this, right?